The Meganar, you have knockup, he's got a little bit of range with the boomerang, you have a lot of uh, disengage as well, you're able to get away with the Meganar. Renekton, of course, has the dive, so able to get in and out of trouble, especially on that top side, not wanting to lose lane too early. Gonna see Trundle and Silas coming through for the Saints on the other side, and then Wukong and Nico gonna come through, so a lot of meta picks right now, a lot of very strong champions. Gonna see a Lux ban and a Morgana ban, so... I wonder what kind of what kind of AD the Saints are going to rock with here, especially seeing the, the Lux and the Morg Ben early. And actually, it is going to be Kate, so makes a lot of sense. Lux, Kate, and Morgana Kate, pretty, pretty solid, especially if she gets the uh, couple roots there. Very, very strong. Going to see Ziggs, actually, so not not quite as common of a pick, but definitely still a character. I think that's in a pretty good spot, so be a, I wouldn't say a super standard draft from both sides, but I would say no real huge surprises of champs picks so far. Oh, fair enough. I mean, for the longest time, we did oftentimes see that if it wasn't a standard 80 carry down in the bot lane it was probably like a ziggs or sometimes you used to see a swain or something yeah. like that that could do magic damage instead of 80 of course but still be the carry with a little extra support alongside there and to be fair if nautilus does manage to land a hook onto either the caitlin or the run out of glass on the side of saints that could be some big damage yeah it could definitely be trouble i will say the one thing renata is just so strong right now her kit say so just having the base w be able to make your teammate in it, it's like the the chemtech drake uh, mechanic where you turn it like zombie mode if you're if you die if you take like lethal damage you're able to you get that small gray health bar you get a chance if you get a kill you actually end up getting revived you get like a, a portion of your health back whether it's like 20 or 25 percent or something in that ballpark so definitely some strong picks from both sides silas gonna be a very very solid mid laner nico very very strong right now as well so both teams kind of know what they want to do it looks like they i would say that gv would go for more of an engage comp with the wukong the nar and the nautilus but still gonna have a lot of ap damage on the back end with the nico and the ziggs and say the saints definitely you can see that as well you have trundle renekton very good for engage using that pillar to try to set up either trying to get some uh some stuns and then obviously renata has her r which very very good for like kind of clearing objectives out or clearing that spacing in the river you can either split a team into two halves pretty much or you can let them auto attack each other to death so very very solid picks from both sides and i'd be very curious to see uh what kind of adjustments the Saints make in game two? Because game one, they, they kind of didn't get stomped early game, but you could definitely tell they fell behind, especially in the bot lane very early. So mm -hmm. got to look to make sure they stay ahead as much as possible. Oh, absolutely. And then, like, unfortunately here for Ricky, I feel like Renekton is one of those champions that, while you do have some outplay potential, it's nowhere near as crazy as, like, a Jax or a Aatrox or a... Uh, Darius. Or a Darius, yeah. like, last time. Of course, we did see the one highlight play up in the top lane earlier today, but, like, you kind of are reliant on maybe beating up on the Nar here for, for a little while here. Yeah. At least in this early stages. But, of course, Nar having a little bit of range does let you poke away especially with that uh, percentage damage, I do believe yep. you get like three hits in a row. So I would definitely expect something very similar to what we saw in the last game where it's going to be a little bit of a pack and forth, but then as soon as the junglers get there, they're probably going to focus there at least a little bit more because I feel like the junglers are going to assume that the bot laners can play safe. Yeah, especially if you're playing uh, Kate and Renata Glass, you're not really trying to get... Renata has a little bit of engage with, the, uh, I think, one of her stuns, but Caitlyn is definitely not looking to get anywhere near the Ziggs or the Nautilus. You want, and the same with the Ziggs as well, like on the back end, even though with the Nautilus. They're trying to stay pretty much off screen as far as possible. Kate's trying to lay those traps so even in the bush to try to stop ganks or, you know, just to like, keep people off her and sit back with that sniper rifle and go to work. So a little bit of the, a similar idea from both teams. Both teams are going to have a, a knockup and a stun, but say Kate and Ziggs, Similar-ish play style, just based on the spacing and the kiting and like trying to peel out of team fights. But and say, Kate, especially with that sniper rifle, if Ziggs kind of gets off screen, she's still able to channel that R and try to maybe find a pick if he's low HP. So hopefully the Saints are able to find a little more, a little more aggression bot lane early because last time they just. Honestly, Aphelios and Tom Kench is a solid duo, but Misfortune, and I believe it was Nautilus, it can just be so oppressive because you have to walk away from the Misfortune, I believe it's the E, and if you walk too far out, Nautilus is going to send a hook out there, and once yeah. he hooks, we saw last game, Misfortune hits bullet time, and it's GG's. Yeah, there was multiple times where that bullet time was just absolutely devastating across the Saints, so let's see how they play around big bomb this time yeah. with, the, <laughs> with the Ziggs. But that is also a little bit of a benefit for the side of... Uh, GVU there because since you're you can basically move and fire your bomb out yeah you don't have to like sit in place for very very long which is going to definitely be a small benefit as we throw it to us for just a quick moment as we load on in but if it does worry me a little bit because if you're able to position well as a misfortune who has basically zero mobility in combat anyway like yeah. outside of combat of course okay, sure. yeah, the fact, yeah the quick step yeah you got the quick step or the strider whatever it's called but uh in the actual team fights 
you have your bomb that can your one of your bomb, I'm gonna say bombs. But let's be honest, his entire kit is basically yeah, bombs, but <laughs> different his, size his w, bombs. His, his satchel charge, yeah. that's what it's called. But being able to use that as an emergency, get out of free kind of option, yeah. a get off me tool, the mines to slow everybody down, you just run away. I worry about seeing uh, Nana Momo Lala there on this side of uh, <laughs> GVU and what kind of performance they could put on this time by. Yeah, so they, they came out. GVU definitely tell as well. They want to go for, even with the, the health update and t champs being a little bit harder to dive under tower, they clearly are looking for those early picks. We saw constant jungle pressure on the Saints. So we saw a lot of topside pressure. One thing GVU did was they read when Saints were ganking very, very well. They were able to kind of reposition themselves. And as you said, if they're going to play the Ziggs and the Nautilus, Nautilus can pull that hook to get away. Ziggs, a lot of escapability, especially with that Satchel charge. So the Saints say there'll be a lot of engage and disengage, a lot of back and forth, but both teams trying to find that early advantage because even though say this is it could be potentially a late game uh, comp you want to try to find that early advantage and not get behind absolutely but there we go we have no crazy shenanigans happening ah full items <laughs> we have full items we have a scoreboard we didn't go black on the first time trying to go into the game oh my god the spectator is working <laughs> knock on wood because I'm say, just yeah. waiting to commentators curse myself yeah. but in terms of the start of this matchup nothing too aggressive from either side as of yet of course Frank Guru does have the ability to outrange the gator for a little bit of extra poke. So fair enough in that regard, as long as there's no teammates hiding in that bush as yep. well. <laughs> That's where things can be troublesome. But of course, this uh, line of scrimmage is going to keep things nice and safe to start things off. Yeah, perfect way to describe it. You can see every every member just kind of holding up those five or six lanes through the jungle and the top and the 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 pathing lanes where you can kind of just like, all right, don't let them invade. If they are going to invade, at least get some vision down and try to back off and get to a teammate. So yeah, line of scrimmage being held by both teams. So you're going to, first waves are going to come through now. Silas will actually going for the early engage on Nico. So Bakery trying to make an early play. We'll probably get a, maybe two autos to his back for his time, but it's going to walk away there. No harm, no foul. Rafa going to be sitting in the bush on the Renata. Rock boom, just going to be standing in front of the wave here, trying to find some easy farm. Rafa actually going to maybe go for the early engage. Bakery boy playing very, very aggressive early on, trying to go for a, a couple engages on the Nico to start things off, but mm -hmm. getting pretty heavily traded out there for his trouble. And I do want to say welcome back, everybody, from viewing on the Twitch side of things. Finally, <laughs> it seems like we're back up and running there as we do see some solid wow. damage coming out here from the side of the Saints. Not going to be enough to get the elimination there on Pluto, but definitely going to make him think twice next time he throws a hook. Yeah, see, especially, yeah, being that low HP early, that's a lot more damage than the Saints had last game already, and that's just, and without too much mana and too much HP being traded off as well, and Bakery Boy going to be backed up a little bit under tower there in the mid. It'd be a little bit of a bot lane push up for the side of the Saints this time. Gonna have a, gonna have the Pryo on the wave. Pluto gonna be sitting back there, maybe trying to land a hook. Not gonna be in the bush. Gonna get the quick level up there now. Bakery boy once again gonna land the chains onto uh, Zyrock. He's gonna get poked up. This Nico damage is actually insane, even for level two. So Bakery boy has to be very, very careful how he goes mid. And now Trundle actually, it looks like he's gonna invade the bot side jungler. Maybe actually walk up for a gank. So looks like maybe a level two gank for the Saints, but looks like he will maybe just go for the camps and back off for the time being. I mean, Trundle's always been pretty good at clearing those camps yeah. out at a very, very decent pace. And it does seem that, like, while Wukong is a fantastic jungler in their own right, but it seems like he's kind of hung up on that red buff maybe a little bit too long there. I'm trying to see if uh, Alonzo actually skipped one of the buffs or not. No, it looks like he got everything. So he was just that much faster yeah. and able to capitalize. Not a level ahead or nothing in this regard, but by being able to ward up that jungle, and going to just leave the one minion there as well, yeah. or the minion, the one raptor, and go to the scuttle crab. So just very good pace so far here from Alonzo. Yeah, man, I wonder if we'll see, uh, we'll see the Wukong, we'll see Cole for probably path back top side to get the other crab and just say a bot crab. Already, actually, maybe we'll have some kind of engage in mid. Bakery Boy is getting tagged down very, very low, though, so he is getting a little bit of this trade-off, but definitely on the losing end of the Nico. The Nico just hit so, so hard, even at early levels. Just very hard to fight her, especially trying to out poker like that. Because if you, if you miss the chains with Silas, Nico's going to get two, three autos, maybe an ability off, and you're going to be down in the trade for sure. Trundle looking to steal some camps, maybe looking for some kind of tower dive early on, but it would definitely be a very, very tricky dive for the Saints. Although, if they are going to walk up, er, uh, Root is going to come through. Rockman is going to go down. Renata W, not going to be enough to save him. The Ignite able to get the kill. Rafa going to be out there as well. Flash is going to come through for Pluto, and the Ignite going to be used by the Saints, so. Maybe they can try to find one. Trundle gonna get a couple autos off. Gonna get hit by the tower though. Nautilus hook into the tower shot as well. Fantastic job by Pluto. Rafa trying to land that. Uh, trying to land the Q onto the Nana and uh, Pluto as well. But just oh, flash is I actually okay. double flash. Both flashes gonna come through. So Nana gonna flash at the Ziggs. Force the Renata flash as well. So both teams just trading some summoner spells and some tags, but nothing really coming out of that. I think you called it correctly. I do believe that Alonzo was on his way down, bot for the possible dive. The big problem though. Pluto wanted to engage on their 
own terms. Yeah. Just completely caught the Saints off guard. It hurt too. It, like lots of damage being able to bring that to a two on two when it should have been a three on two before yeah. the fight really even had the opportunity to start there. And sure, Alonzo was. Did some decent damage done, but of course, Trundle does not really have any damage spikes, right? Yeah. It's all just kind of consistent DPS. As we see Bakery Boy again just getting poked out here. Thankfully, he does have a little bit of uh, uh, health regen in the kit to be able to get that back. But still, you just lost like a quarter of your health, if not more, from one little combo. Yeah, and that's going to be a very tough dive, especially when you don't have any items. Just refills on deck. So he, didn't really, he doesn't really have any items to get the power spike in. Now he's going to pull out the Sheen, get some boots. Ref, uh, get a get a reload on the refill, so to speak, and then so now maybe might be able to like make some play or have a little more agency, but yeah, say especially when Pluto actually the ignite's gonna come through. The ignite should actually drop Bakery Boy and end up will it will as well. So Bakery Boy once again just walking up a little bit too far. Nico is gonna use both summoner spells, but she will definitely take the kill in the process. Should get Pryo in the wave mid is gonna hit level six as well before the Silas, I think. So now the Saints uh, Cloud Dragon is up as well. They just came up a few seconds ago, so now both teams just. A little bit of posturing back and forth, but GVU so far with just the ever so slight edge and golden kills. Grandview is just doing such a good job of seeing these plays happen and then engaging prior yes. to the sweet spot for the Saints there. Like, just keeping them completely out of position, finding the kill before the person comes in to actually get the gank. I don't know if it's just good vision or just good game sense or yep. what, but they have been able to capitalize on that opportunity twice there. First from Pluto, this time from Zykuro, and just going to help them get that lead all boosted up here. Yeah, and I think that's such a huge thing is to be more proactive than reactive. They see this one, is gonna try to He's going to sweep out Try. He knows you don't have vision there, although, see, once again, you can... I don't think they had... Actually, maybe he did clear a ward there, so they, I think they had a ward there. Going to try to find something. Pillar is going to come through and knock up Nana, but very fortunate to get away from the Renata ability as well. Gets knocked up to the left side by the Pillar and just a little bit off off target there. Could have been a possible kill for the Saints, but once again, Bakery going to come up to mid lane, try to mess with the Nico, try to get some poke damage, but Nico walking him back toward the mid tower. Joe Biden is going to be tagged down. Ricky going to be in for a little hard time with the Nar. Is going to have Mega very, very soon as well. Now Mega is going to come through, knock up into the wall. Ricky's going to have a very hard time, but he should be able to dive away. The Mega Nar is going to come through. Bakery Boy going to try to find the kill. Zyrock, this is a very, very close back and forth. That Silas sustain is insane. Full health regen almost. Nautilus Hook is going to come through. Alonzo going to get knocked up. The root is going to be there. Rock Boom tagging up from the back line. Just a lot of the members of the Saints low as well, but oh, this GB, is awkward. A couple low, yeah, this is a very awkward team fight. Dragon is at half health. Uh, Nautilus is going to get the health, and we are going to see a Nar. Uh, once again, Prank is going to be disconnected from the game, so I suspect we might see a pause in a moment or two here, but Dragon is going to reset, and for the time being, we're actually not paused, so both teams are going to keep fighting for the time being, but actually the Dragon, the full health didn't reset, so once again, GVU is going to take first Dragon, and it will be the Cloud Dragon. Okay, yeah, there's just too many low health bars there for the Saints to try and contest after that. We are going to see the pause come on in through, and apparently top boom. Top boom. <laughs> so that is one way to describe it, I <laughs> suppose. So we'll throw it back to us here for just a moment here as we do await for uh, their top lane to get back into the swing yeah. of things here. They've been pretty good so far. There's been a couple disconnects so far today, but at least they've, they've been, been like quick, a minute yeah. or two. Yeah. Knock on wood, that actually happens again nice and quick, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so once again, as soon as I'm about to get course, onto my yeah, next every time spot. we hit the transition button, it's going to go right back into it, which is good. It's, it's We've seen some very long league pauses where you're just sitting around like almost like damn near falling asleep. So to get back <laughs> yeah. in the game in 45 seconds always feels good. And we've seen a good amount of action too because we've seen only two kills and that's kind of how the new league meta has been. At least it's a lot of action for both sides. And we saw a really good back and forth, both no lane with... Really huge prior advantage that we saw back and forth. GVU did get the first dragon, and I believe first Herald is about to be up soon as well. So both teams are going to be fighting for those objectives and trying to figure things out in the meantime. And now, yes. say, say Wukong going to be a little bit ahead of farm on the Trundle, but Trundle going to path bot side. No real huge gang shit. Say, the, even the dragon fight kind of got scattered there. A lot of the low health bars are saying it's nothing really coming of it. So just so far, going to be a little back and forth. Rift is going to be up now, so I would suspect both teams to either... Uh, Try to get hella vision on the top side, or it's hard to start this rift fight, rift fight sooner than later. Yeah, absolutely. Now we do see Rafa, of course, roaming towards this mid lane. I'm sure they've got to be spotted out. Yeah, definitely at this point yeah. here. But just an eco is not threatened in the slightest. Ooh. Level seven compared to four, you are going to be able that to do damage. a ton of damage. Wow. And the Nautilus is right there as well. Pluto looking to maybe seal the deal with a hook, but not quite going to find this time by. Rafa being gone, it very well could be the go button here for this side of GPU to maybe make a move towards that Rift Herald. Does not look like it will be contested by the Saints. It's going to pass that one up and try to get the carries on the side of the Saints. A little bit of extra gold. That being said, though, they are pretty much being um, 
matched one for one yeah. at the very least here. Like, sure, Rock Boom is still down there in the bot lane, but so is Nana there on the zigs. And, of course, with the, uh, oh, it's the Mega Inferno bomb, you can instantly yeah. basically clear that wave yeah. if you need to. Yeah, and, see, and I think GVU, one thing they've done so well is their timing on objectives has seemed to be like almost flawless. Every time the Saints seem to have three on recall or they seem to like, they realize that they can push back and the health is so GVU immediately jumps on the objectives and they get them pretty much right after the timer kicks off for them. So they've done such a good job of just getting early on that rift, getting the dragons early. And I say, once you get those objectives early on in the game, you pressure the other team to have to kind of make it up, especially if you go up two, three dragons, they know, hey, if we lose soul point and we haven't really gotten a lot of towers yet, this game could easily fall apart in front of us. So you put a lot of pressure them to kind of force fights. Nico Ultimate is going to get stolen there by Bakery Boy, so not the worst little trade there. Ricky is going to find a lot of tags on the Nar here. He might pop Nega or might pop Mega Nar in a second here, get it backwards there. Now Prank is going to get a couple tags on Ricky, has Mega Nar available, but won't be able to make a huge play. So we can use it to clear a little bit of wave there. Try to get a little stun on Ricky, unable to find anything. A little back and forth in the top lane. Mid lane, Bakery Boy once again getting stuck under uh, under tower there. Getting a lot of damage. That Nico does so much damage, it's insane early on. Okay, I was about to make the joke that Prank Guru like, just Mega evolved like it's Pokemon or something. <laughs> but the way that Mega Nar looks, it actually reminded me of a lot of Fur Alligator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> nonetheless, very similar to, or to what you were saying earlier in regards to like the objectives and how like just getting them puts on a ton of pressure. You have to be so confident in your scaling to give up, say, three dragons. Yeah. And just know that, okay, we've farmed up enough that we can basically hold off a Dragon Soul team. Mm -hmm. And how many teams can pull that off, to say the least? Yeah. Normally, you give up two and you it's, it's time to contest. But of course, only the first one going down. Saints are only behind by two. However, we might have an engage in the mid lane if they decide to tower dive. Never mind, have a bot lane. Yeah, Nico is gonna engage as well. Nautilus is gonna get rooted. They're gonna get frozen. So much damage. Ignite did go through on Roth, but yeah, just such huge damage going through the side of GVU. Pretty much walking away with full health. No getting bomb a, though. Getting a couple su summoners out of uh, St. Clair as well. They do have to fall back under tower, so might be able to get a solid little push here. Coltro is gonna roam either back mid or gonna go maybe steal some jungle out of the top side there, or bot side rather. Udo and Nana, once again, going to try to shove this wave under tower. TP is going to come through for the Silas. Baker Boy going to try to find the chains there. Unable to land. Looks like Wukong might be looking for a dive here as well. Going to sweep out. They can do this, I they, think. Yeah, with the Nico damage, they might be able to find it. Actually, they're going to drop Shelly as well. So once this tower drops, they're oh. going to go for the engage. Alonzo is here as well, though. Pillar going to come through. Going to find a lot of auto attacks on the Kothor. Kothor trying to spin out of it, but not sure he'll be able to quite. Flash is going to come through. One HP, will he fall? Oh, Just walking away. Kothor barely escaping with his life. Bakery Boy and Alonzo giving chase, but. That, it, that hurts if you're St. Clair. You invest a lot into that and just in a perp double route, they're coming through for the Nico. So fantastic job by GVU to get in there, get a little bit of damage, and luckily disengage when it looked pretty dire. Yeah, you cannot get much closer than that. The Cal Cothro was able to uh, stay alive there is beyond me. And I was actually really worried there that somehow GVU were going to be able to turn that because yeah. Bakery <laughs> Boy and Alonzo were not done with that push until very, very late. As we do see Ricky up in the top lane, pops the ultimate, looking for the solo kill. Yeah, Ricky flashed, for, left flashed as well. I thought he maybe had the kill guaranteed. It looked like he, he might have had the kill there if he was able to get maybe two, three more autos. But Nara owns again very hard, but he can just hop away. They're going to maybe take the Grom there as well, get a little XP, maybe some health advantage. Or actually just going to kite it out. Ricky is going to look like possibly maybe looking to dive, but maybe going to back off. Actually, Ricky, yes, he, he's going to proxy uh, He's going to proxy this Nara under the tower a little bit. So once this wave goes down, though, Ricky actually is just going to fully proxy the wave. So trying to keep Prank as far under shoved as possible. And I don't hate the idea because you have four members of GVU pretty much playing bot side. So Ricky knows, hey, this is a 1v1. I can kind of just bully this guy under the tower, but Ricky does have to be careful if he gets yeah. in tower range because that that HP could turn in a heartbeat. And the thing too, like he's going for the proxy. He does have the one ward there. However, nothing else around that yeah, area was yeah. warded. So that was just a very, very confident move unless they did spot the, the Wukong down by the dragon. As we see, dragon number two going to be given up uncontested. Just going to end up trying to get some farm, but we do see they just left it to the Wukong to take care of the dragon, and now everybody else is just going to push their lane. Yeah, we're not going to maybe try to take Scuttle here, or it's going to try to get topside vision for when the next rift comes up in a little while here, Jeez. but once again, just every single dragon is uncontested. That, that Nico damage is absolutely something else, man. So just with Darksteel and, and Sorkpen and Lost Chapter already doing so much damage, Nana, going to lay out some bombs and some satchels, try to keep people back from pushing up on the wave there. Power actually should fall in the next wave. If it doesn't fall now, Wukong might be able to just take this one out. So T1 bot tower is going to fall for the Saints. Might have some engaged topside, though. They finally, uh, Ricky's got some teammates. Going to be three, uh, two apiece in the jungle. Alonzo and Ricky going to maybe go for the dive. 
Silas is going to walk up from behind as well. Land the chains. Flash comes through for Prank. Going to get out of there. Ricky going to get a couple tags. Pillar is going to come through. Ricky is going to fall eventually to Prank, though. Nar going to find the kill. Silas going all the way in the Renata. Or just do the Berserk comes through. Ignite comes through as well. Silas looks like he actually is going to fall. Renata W not going to be enough. Alonzo is going to fall as well. So somehow, someway, GVU turns that fight on its head and completely walks St. Clair out of the top side. Rafa got such a good ultimate there as yep. well. Oh, no. Oh. This is why you don't open the shop when you're backing. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely capitalized all over the place, whether it was the top lane or the bot lane. Just clutching oh. things up. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's going to be the, the flash there as well. Going to use a stopwatch to keep himself alive just a little bit longer. And now that Ricky's here for some reinforcements, I would be very surprised if they tried to continue this, but maybe... Yeah, Ricky's definitely going to try it. Pluto going to look for the execute for sure, but it looks like he will Denied. be stopped in time. Delonzo is going to hit the pillar. Ricky should be able to finish this kill. They'll probably give it to him. They nice. will indeed. Nana is still going to be shoving this bot side. Getting a T2 tower already at like 40% HP. Bakery is a great combo there. Chains Everfrost. Going to take out the Ziggs and drop the ADC. So, Bakery Boy, great job to get the roam there, realizing not really a whole lot for him to do in mid lane with the way being shoved there. Just going to go roam bot, find the early pick. And now Alonzo going to pick up this red buff, maybe try to start a fight with Wukong, but Wukong going to use the W and just back away, it looks like, for the time being. Now, Ricky, once again, going to... And if I'm St. Clair... Wow, Ricky getting fully comboed. Everfrost, Roof coming through from Nico and Ricky. Pretty much getting 100 to 0 in 5 to 6 seconds there, if that even. And now, once again, GVU. Not that they're going to get another objective uncontested, but with Ro with Ricky gone, this is a very hard engage if you're the Saints. Yeah, absolutely. And then even just looking at CS numbers now that we got it updated here, it's just been wow. a little bit of a runaway here with the exception of top lane, but at the same time, that matchup is supposed to go that far favored yep. for at least the early stages, to say the least there. And Ricky was able to capitalize in that regard. But just between the Nico damage coming out here from Zaikuro and then just the poking and the safety yep. that Ziggs can bring, even though you may not necessarily be landing the bomb directly onto your opponent, but it's a bomb. It doesn't matter. It just explodes. It goes boom. It yep. doesn't need to be a direct <laughs> a direct hit. It still does a ton of damage, and it's making Rock Boom's life very, very difficult. Rafa yep. as well. We've seen time and time again here where as soon as Pluto gets the hook and just takes one bomb that alone is like a quarter combo yeah and bakery it's gonna steal the uh, the nar ultimate there from pretty from max distance so really good one that's that's definitely gonna be useful for team fighting get that knock back into the wall and get a little bit of damage there ricky is gonna be rooted under tower everfrost as well they're gonna try to find the kill nico it's huge damage coming through cold throw gonna be there as well ricky is gonna fall there and now top tower will fall in favor or will go in favor of gbu and they're up about 5k gold now. They do have the first two dragons. They do have the Rift Herald still in their back pocket. Wukong going to be uh, the holder of that one. And now St. Clair once again. Definitely not too far out of the game, but you can clearly tell GVU has the early advantage. And they actually are going to drop Shelly topside. So they're going to force some kind of fighter. They're going to force a couple members of the Saints to show topside here. Yeah, they're going to need a little bit of damage done. They might be able to stop it before it wow. charges. But it does force a lot of Saints to go up there. Yep. So now it's just going to leave bot lane basically completely open here. Rock Boom going to just continue to try farm their way up. Of course, a little bit of a rough start here for one of our many uh, Saints newcomers here today in this matchup, but just GBU showing similar to what you were saying before. Objectives are on top of it pretty much as it spawns. Their vision has been very, very good, and their ability to predict the maneuvers yeah. that the Saints are going to go for has just been pretty well on point, and the one lane that got ahead, that top lane, well, they just dove them like twice. Yeah, that's the one thing about top lane. You can be even a level or two ahead, but if they decide to focus top side, especially if they have have the Rift Herald where they have something to play off of to either tank tower shots or create some kind of distraction or, you know, cause some kind of disturbance. You can really, really start to punish that lane. Especially, yeah, being a soul lane. Ricky, maybe he goes to the hit me at the Blast Cone. Gonna try to find the dive on the Wukong. Actually, it was Nico rather fooled me for a second. Huge damage coming through. And once again, Ricky, he will end up falling. It looks like Wukong is gonna give chase. Ricky gonna flash. <laughs> Blast Cone just not hit in time. And Ricky will fall the Kothra once again. This Wukong, 4-0 and o to start. Already getting a couple items under his belt. He is going to be an absolute mess to deal with as the game goes on. Yeah, I feel like, unfortunately, Unfortunately, the way this one is going, even though the gold lead, again, is still not completely too far gone, just, again, once we get ourselves into a teamfight scenario, I have a hard time believing that our Saints are going to be able to pull this off as of this moment. Yeah. Just the combo of the Nico ult, the Wukong ult alongside the Nar. And then you put a Mega Inferno Bomb on top of that? Oh my goodness, that would blow up half the team <laughs> Probably the at right least servers. three quarters of the way, if not a, a Wombo Combo.
Yeah, insane. See, we see. I think most of that gold lead is actually coming from the jungle so far, too. We see already Wukong already has Longsword, Kindle Gem, Tier 2 Boots, got Divine, and he has Caulfield's Hammer, and Trundle just sitting with a little bit of extra health, still Tier 1 Boots, and adds Divine Sunder as well. So I think most of that gold we are seeing is going to be a difference in the jungle and Wukong. There it is. Once again, GVU uncontested. Going to get the third dragon. Going to be on soul point now. So St. Clair, once again, this GVU able to time those recalls, time when they know St. Clair maybe quite can't get the engage that they want. Especially, and that's the thing, too. The individual dragons also give buffs. So GVU might be way more willing to take a fight. Nar gonna get huge poke back on Ricky. Will he actually find the kill? Now he's gonna turn on Ricky and somehow find the kill. Nar, when it looked like everything was going wrong, he did flash, but you do not care if you turn that kill on Ricky and GVU just finding every way to get it done right now against the Saints. Yeah, this lane has gotten to the point now where even if the Nar does get jumped on initially, there is still just so much additional range that can be played with here and Rafa's gonna be forced to ulti but at the same time so is Frank Kuru and it doesn't quite hit its mark but it does not matter Rafa is just going to get caught out Rock Boom actually got caught out as well Alonso is going to get destroyed and just a very awkward turn of events here where three saints yeah. are going to go down for four saints rather are going to go down for free yeah and awkward was definitely the perfect word because they were on recall from the dragon they came back topside to maybe try to skirmish but Renata gets caught out ends up burning the ultimate i'm she may have i don't know if she flashed as well actually yeah she, i think she flashed as well burn the r solo onto the nautilus which i get it, it was just to try to get away but at that point you might you honestly might just be better taking the death because especially when you know gvu is already lurking topside and when GVU, when there's a fight happening, GVU, they, you see four members just immediately swarm to where the fight's going in. Ricky is going to get tagged on, going to dive in, try to get the engage. Massive damage. Once again, the Nico going to come through. Renata W is going to hit Ricky, but he will not be able to get the revive. Bakery Boy is going to find a kill, but he's going to be 3v1. We'll get instantly 100 to 0 upon the stopwatch being down. Silas with the sustain. Going to find the kill on Zyrox. Still alive, still finding damage, but two members of the Saints will fall. That's once again four dead. That's going to be the ace for GVU, and that actually might be the game as well. They do have a cannon wave to play back on. Ah. Uh, It'll be a, actually only Renata on respawn. This could very well be GG for GVU. Yeah, absolutely. If you see him pushing towards it right now, the first Nexus turret will it's fall over. very quickly. Yeah. There is no way they're going to be able to get Renata. past this one. GVU, we knew going into this after seeing their ranks that, okay, GVU, I don't know what they did, but they have themselves quite wow. the squad. And I know rank isn't everything, but it was decisive this time by. Yeah, this time definitely more decisive than the first game. 18-4 to 4 kill advantage. Definitely a huge lead in golden. We just saw GVU... The way they play around these objectives and roam the map, especially having characters like Nico, Wukong, the Nar, you have so many ways to engage and disengage, and you have the AP damage, you have the AD damage, and they just, playing around those objectives, did such a good job of either drawing the Saints' attention away for just enough time to get those engages and find those picks, and then eventually the Saints just, they were fighting in a bunch of these 1v1 and 2v1s, and you're never going to win against a team like that, and GVU just... They punished every single time the Saints even made the smallest of mistakes. Yeah, everybody was looking for individual outplays, and I mean, just team play shuts that down yeah. very, very quickly. Eventually, the individual outplays, you can kind of bait them out a little bit. Yeah. And again, just capitalized every single time for the most part. A flawless game coming out from two of the players on the side of GVU, Prekuru and the Nar, as well as yep. uh, Kolthro on the Wukong, not going down in the slightest. Yeah, look at that gold advantage for the Wukong, too. That, they almost double the gold of the Trundle, uh, in approximately, so that's how you could tell he was getting itemized very, very quickly, and once Wukong gets those items, especially that early to mid-game, when he kind of gets a couple items, he can be a nightmare to deal with, and if you're the Saints, they just didn't really quite have the damage to deal with it, especially that Nico as well. That Nico every single fight just starting off every fight sending someone down to 25 30 percent hp and especially when it's your when it's your renekton and your silas getting chunked down early in the fight st Clair didn't really have a win condition besides that yeah just it was too far gone unfortunately and then even just the combo ability of their ultimates yep. and of the team fights just made things so difficult they didn't even get to necessarily have the chance to do a full fledged but at the same time one was for a 5v5 yeah, that's what like, the Saints got caught was weird. a lot. Yeah, and, and the thing, the time you'd think they'd be 5v5 is around objectives, but the Saints pretty much conceded whether GVU timed it right or the Saints just realized we don't maybe have the damage yet to fight this. Hmm. They've taken every objective in this series besides, I think, one dragon uncontested, which it's okay to give some objectives, but with the individual buffs and the gold buff to the objectives, you can't just toss objectives away to, like, what so far we've seen is a better team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, I'm just going to quickly take a look because we could possibly have the run back here today. I'm going to confirm with the players in just a moment because i don't know it's one of those situations where you you get a loss like that do you really want to play another set immediately afterwards or do you th feel like you can get the redemption and you're all warmed up yeah and we know league players uh the mental boom is usually a, a little quicker to trigger than in other games but especially the saints we saw a couple adaptations in the draft we still saw like mostly meta picks but just 
once again, it just the same as the first game, GVU, they feel confident, they're running a decent amount of damage, and they're thinking, okay, like, we're just going to try to bully you guys in lane, we're going to try to set things up, and we're going to try to go, and the way they roamed in teamwork is just St. Clair has to find some way to either find some kind of hole in the draft or find some kind of game plan adjustment, maybe just honestly sell it out for the objectives and try to just take those 5v5s and pray for the best. Yeah. That being said, it does look like we will be doing a second set here versus GVU. The players are going to take themselves a bit of a break, though. Ten minutes or so. Get re uh, all recuperated and uh, <laughs> refreshed. refreshed and good to go. So we're going to take ourselves a quick ten-minute break as well. And we'll get to see if the Saints can pull off the run back. That was a really, really rough first set. Yeah. However, can they do it? We'll have to see. So don't go anywhere.
Welcome back once again from that very, very brief intermission. Gonna have more League of Legends Hue action. As you may, uh, actually, you haven't noticed it, the overlay is not up, but because of a little uh, issue with GVU getting into lobby earlier today, St. Clair is actually going to start the series up 1 0. So they did just get 2 0 in honestly pretty dominating fashion by GVU, but now St. Clair in a best of three does have an early 1 0 advantage. And we are actually gonna go into the pro draft screen this time so we can get a little a little sneak peek before the game actually starts. And immediately we're gonna see uh, the Syndra ban from St. Clair, unsurprising as GVU's top player is Challenger Syndra. And then, of course, that darn cat Yumi out of there again. And yeah, nobody ever likes the kitty get nerfed and it it's still, it's still not worst. enough. But yeah, definitely a blessing here for the Saints side of things. I know, at least personally, here from the production side of things, given we scheduled this matchup that starts at 5 o'clock, not 6. I am definitely pleased with uh, there being some sort of call happening yeah. there but of course definitely biased in its own right but that <laughs> being said sure you might have a map however gpu looks insanely dominating like yes. you said but it now just takes one good game for the saints to be able to pull this one off which is interesting yeah. to say the least considering this double round robin format mm -hmm. that we do have here in in Hughfest, so some of you are probably like, hey, why the heck are we actually still live right now? <laughs> <coughs> the, I thought the match finished. Yes, it did. it did. But we only had a week to do this, so we're doing it again. Yeah, we're gonna run it back right away, and once, we're gonna see a couple respect bands from St. Clair now. We're gonna see the Graves. Nautilus gonna be out of there. Pluto was doing a lot of work on the Nautilus, both roaming pop side and just doing so much work in the team fights with the double root. And once again, pretty much the same bands. Gonna see Sivir and Nunu getting taken off the board. Nunu just insane mobility and just the gank potential is just absolutely insane. Able to tank a couple tower shots as well, get those dives in. Obviously Yumi and Sivir, too, uh, even after the nerfs, I'd still say Yumi is probably one of the most frustrating and annoying champs to play against, so not surprising that we are going to see St. Clair actually first pick Jarvan, so that'll probably be, I'm guessing that'll be Jarvan jungle, I don't think we'll see Jarvan top, although we actually might, I, I know Ricky I think has been playing Jarvan top a little bit, so still a, a pretty decent flex pick either way, and we'll have to see what GVU wants to respond with, but St. Clair immediately going to go for the, uh, the engage it looks like. Okay, so yeah, we have our engage off the bat here, which is definitely nice to see the least but exactly what does gvu end up pulling off well answer engage for engage yeah. gonna bring the recon out this time by get a little engage from the support side of things which to be fair makes sense if that's the kind of play style that pluto likes being on those engaged supports yeah so okay nautilus is banned let me get another one yeah and recon definitely in a very very good spot in the game right now he pairs up so well with so many different adc so be curious to see who they bot lane partner with gonna be viego jungle as well so as you said, definitely want to engage. They want to dive on, get those knockups, get those stuns, and then have Diego get that reset with that R and be able to transfer over character to character there. But definitely going to be engaged for engage to start things off. Say Rakan is just so, so strong right now. So two very, very solid picks from GVU. St. Clair going to have to find some way to answer because, let's say, the last two games, they uh, they had no answer despite even some differences in both drafts. And then real quick, do want to say thank you to Commanda for the sub with the Prime. Thank ah. you for supporting the channel. Thank you so much. <laughs> but then going on over to draft once again here to see real time this time what the Saints opts to go for. Ooh, I mean, this is a Zephyrod classic. But this is going to be the first time that we get to see Bakery Boy on it. The Azir getting picked up. Yeah, we see it. We've seen a lot of Azir in pro play the last little while. Just the ability to stay with that, the R to flip over. There's engage. There's disengage with this kit. You're able to get a little bit of poke with the uh, like the fake soldiers or whatever that you can uh, put out. So very say we're we're gonna see a lot of uh, heavy team fighting or heavy skirmishes because both these uh, teams between the ultimates and everything else they definitely want to get in there and and trade blows and go stand and bang. So be very curious to see if Saint Clair goes. Yeah, Saint Clair okay. is committing to the engage. Mumu was actually. If they're playing a Mumu support, it could be a Mumu jungle. If they're playing a Mumu support, I think it's one of the best support picks in the game right now because I think they recently gave him a second Q charge and it co combo mm. that with his R. And I think you can actually build like Sunfire on Mumu. You can build like a tank of Mumu now. So you basically just grapple hook into the center of the fight, knock up three times, and just eat shots until your team's able to pick off the rest. Like classic, like prior to season one of Mumu, eh? Just but from the support role instead of the jungle. Yeah, support of Mumu is like increasing in popularity. It's, it's very, very strong right now. And then we are going to see the NAR come out, but one thing that also we did not quite mention yet is GVU did make a substitution. Yes. We did have initially playing the NAR up in the top lane. Prankuru. Prankuru is the there. Screen. But yeah, that exactly it. I was going to have to go check again for a second there, so <laughs> thanks for getting on to that one. But yeah, there's going to be Stripes this time, and TA Stripes coming in to play here for the side of GVU. Picking up the Nard this time by, see if there's any little difference. But I do like that move from GVU. If yep. there was any sort of risk for a disconnect to happen, especially when you're already down one map going into the series, yep. 
Make the switch out. This is exactly why you have more than enough players per roster. Yes. <laughs> don't. It may be a five on five, but don't stick with the five. You're gonna shoot yourself in the foot. I yeah. swear. And I mean, with 160 champions, <laughs> it's not hurt to have a pretty deep uh, thing there. And actually, GVU is gonna go two top side bands. Gonna take out Darius and Aatrox for Ricky. So clearly, trying and to target yeah. Ricky's picks there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not surprised. We've seen the Jax, Aatrox, Darius tr trio band. We saw pretty much every single game in collegiate last year, and even now with Ricky. Not necessarily having the greatest impact so far. Obviously, credit to GVU for just playing so, so well so far. But they're still, out of respect, going to take out those two bands. And actually, the Cassiopeia and the Nico band going to come through for the side of Sam there. So, Fair. honestly, I don't hate it. That's, that's a lot of AP in the mid lane you do not want to deal with, especially uh, against the Zero. Say, a Zero's got great engage and disengage, but you definitely don't want to sit there and get poked out by AP champs the entire game. So, very, very solid from the Saints to ban out those two. And then, obviously, the two respect bans for Ricky getting banned. But this should be, I think we're going to see some very, very good fights because it's. There's a lot of engage, but some of these champs don't have a ton of disengage, so there's going to be a... It'll be sta one less standing in those, a lot of these fights, I feel like. And this is going to be interesting. This, I would have said this is probably going to be a support. However, Maybe. with the Rakan being here, that's probably not the case. It would be a long time since I've seen a mid lane brand that wasn't like from somebody trying to level up a brand new account. Yeah, trying to, yeah, trying to, get, exactly, trying to get that free elo and mid. Just not that he's there. bad though. Like, that's, I mean, yeah, no, brand, I, <laughs> he's fire, solid. Especially if you, you get like that Leandris build and you get a lot of tick damage, he can do a lot of work. And it looks like it actually is going to be Jarvan top. And I would assume uh, Trundle's going to go to the jungle. I would, I'd be very surprised if they put. Darvin in the jungle and Trundle talk, which is yeah, how that can be done right now. Definitely could, though. <laughs> now, Brand, so yeah, it's probably going to be a Brand mid, so Brand versus Azir Brand, just a lot of long range uh, AP damage. Really, really good for team, team fights because you can kind of sit from that safe distance and just try to get those stuns and try to land that fire damage, but. Let's see who the Saints are going to play as their fifth spot. Still waiting for an yeah. ABC selection, though, as well. What does Rock Boom have for us here? I'm I wonder if it'll be a, a Draven look. with the Amumu. Uh -huh. I wouldn't. Draven is in a really good spot. Tristana, actually. So okay. We're see Tristan Amumu, so. <laughs> St. Clair looking for a little bit. Actually, going to nope. the MF. That's, I think that's a much better pick for uh, the combo with the Amumu there. And it's going to be Jin and Rakan in the bot lane. So we should see a very, very good bot lane duo. Both supports are want to knock up. They want to get in there and engage. And then Miss Fortune and Jin just want to hit hard. Yeah, absolutely. And I respect the Saints for going for this because this does feel like a bit of an all or nothing kind of oh, composition. Oh, it's all when you're playing Amumu, it's and, all in. Yeah, especially with Amumu down there in the bot lane. But all of them, this is the quintessential dive composition pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and this is reliance on strictly finding picks and making sure that that does not become a fair fight, to yeah. say the least. That, that It's not going to be a five on five. But at the same time, the tools are there if they do end up actually finding it. Of course, we're going to be hopping on over to the client side of the draft in just a quick second. Just to kind of confirm lane positions, because they're majority of them seem pretty straightforward. Yeah. However, I feel like I can absolutely be taken aback by something here in a second. I might have just done a, a whoopsie. So let's quickly switch that out of there. Yeah. But uh, a little bathroom break for the players are after, you know, playing a lot of league in a row. You got to you got to find some time to go yeah. somehow, some way. So yeah, let's kill that music here for just a second here. But yeah, it just takes especially the longer this game goes, the more like devastating a pick composition could definitely be. Yeah. But even if it does end up being a proper five on five, the Saints definitely have the tools to do a bit of a wombo combo yeah. for themselves. We have the curse of the sad bullet time. Like that's a classic yeah. <laughs> combo as old as time here there with the misfortune of Mumu. Yeah. Jarvan is basically you need to engage, he'll fit on pretty much any composition yeah. here. And just with the rest of them that we're taking a look at as well seeing the azir whether it be for dive or for peel it could very well work and then trundle he's never bad at any sort of composition yeah. you just kind of throw him in is he impactful all the time maybe not but is he bad no no yeah once you get in team fights throw that pillar up get anyone out of position just start spamming those auto attacks he can hit like an absolute truck and especially if you get a couple health items you get that divine on him he can he can pack quite a punch, and he can take quite a shot as well. So I said both teams are going to see a lot of engage. And this, I think for Saints, this is a much better like team fighting comp because at least like the way those kits are used, if Saints aren't getting in there and fighting, then they're just doing nothing because the whole kit is based around get in there, get those knockups, and try to find those picks. So they have to be willing to commit, and I think it'll be really good for those objective fights as well. Even if you like, just at least 
please not let GVU get them for free. At least if you can delay GVU a few seconds, get one or two knockups, and wait for the rest to follow in it. I think it'd be very important, and I like this comp a lot better than what they had last time for that. Mm -hmm. That being said, I am still very scared of this GVU composition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is going to be maybe not as clear-cut as the last ones that we might have seen. As we are going to go quickly here into the actual client-side draft, yeah. just to confirm exactly where everybody is going. Yeah. But... Like, brand, tons of burst damage and, yep. like, hidden CC, basically. You yep. don't think about it right away, but it is absolutely there if necessary. The Nard, that's a game-changing ultimate, so that can easily swing a fight by itself. And then just the additional engage and safety there with the Jin as well. It's going to be interesting, to say the least. But where are these champions going? That is the question. We may have a rough idea, but just to be sure, let's see. Yes, I would suspect uh, the Jarvan will come through topside. Obviously, Trundle and Jarvan could definitely be flexed, but I think we've seen Trundle so much. He's been living in the jungle these last couple mm -hmm. patches, and Jarvan, we've seen... He was, I think he was a very, very popular jungle pick a little while back, and I think he's moved more into that top lane pick. I know a lot of the characters kind of are better off in certain lanes after the last couple updates or the itemization changes and such, so... Probably going to see Jarvan top lane. That's what saw the bands earlier. You're going to see the Singer Graves Nautilus mm. band coming off once again. And then Yumi, Nunu, and Sivir. And then, yeah, Jarvan sure going to be yeah. picked up by Ricky there. So, yeah, Jarvan is going to be in that top lane against the Nar. So, should be a decent matchup, all things considered. But Nar is, Nar is just so tough to fight against all the time because he can poke you out from far away. And as soon as he's got that Mega, he can either choose to fully engage you or just get out of dodge. At least, though... If Ricky can catch the Nar in a spot where you'd probably need the jungler alongside you, but as soon as you full commit on the engage, you're probably okay if you have backup. Yes. If you're stuck by yourself and you just flag and drag yourself in there, well, the Nar has a jump. It's just going to get out of yep. dodge. I like guess nobody's business. Even if they do get knocked up, they can just hop away afterwards. Yep. But if you have some backup, which it looks like Alonzo is going to be right there with maybe some trundle pillars, that can make things difficult. And it looks like. It is going to be the brand in the mid lane, sure enough. So I was thinking, is there any way the Rakan gets flex? I feel like I've seen it in mid lane like maybe once or twice in competitive, but no. Sure enough, it is going to be exactly as we thought for the most part here. Yeah, I would have thought maybe if they're going to flex, I think brand could definitely play ADC because you got you got a lot of damage. You can kind of sit from a safe distance and poke at people, but once you lock in the Jin, their Jin certainly not a flex pick by any stretch. Going to play the ADC. With his support, I believe, say it was, I think it was, uh, why do I already forget the support? It was Rakan, yeah, you just mentioned it, so. A yep, yep. lot of root, a lot of CC capability from the bot lane, but also for the Saints, I mean, Amumu would say, adding that extra Q, he has, once Amumu hits level 6, that's the thing, though. Jin Misfortune is really good for playing that early game, you can kind of keep the farm up, because Amumu doesn't really fully come online until level 6. Obviously, yeah. those two Q charges, you can make a lot of plays, but hitting that level 6 and then comboing the W and the E, once he hits level 6, then the real fun starts for him, and he's kind of... Say, especially with the auto attack range being pretty much like it pressed up against people because he's a melee champ, so he doesn't have like a ton of value until then. But once he hits that level six spike and those team fights start, he can he can be absolutely invaluable. And Saint Clair, they're going to need to figure out some team fighting mechanics here because GVU has dominated that facet. Absolutely, it, and then going back to the Mumu like coming online at level six, that was the classic meme for the longest time <laughs> for. Uh... For junglers, like, way back in the early couple seasons, like, oh, I have an Amumu jungle. Okay, I won't see you for a couple minutes. Have fun getting level six. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was, like, the same thing with having a Warwick on your team. Yeah. You just knew that, like, they're not coming to gank until level yeah. six until they get their ultimates because otherwise, yeah, they're just kind of running at them. And then you miss the bandage toss and you just kind of walk away. Yeah, Amumu, yeah, unless he's queuing uh, every jungle camp to try to rotate the top side like Spider-Man swinging through buildings. It's a little bit hard. That'd be kind of fun, that. though, to be honest. Oh, yeah, it's fun to play. <laughs> and that's why I know I've been playing him a little bit because I realized, like, See, especially with the engaged meta, having having tons of CC when people have a little more health is like very, very crucial because it's like having that landing one Q, you might have been able to burst one shot someone before. Now it's going to take possibly two, three waves of cooldowns and abilities and having like two or three ways to CC somebody, especially like a Mumu Misfortune can slow people down with the E and the W. And it's just, it's very, very good combo and Saints just have to find some way to do it because... They kind of, they're kind of not getting super bullied in lane, but they haven't, I wouldn't say they've even, they've won the laning phase in the first two games at all. They kind of, you know, it was, if it was either 50-50 or it was heavy GVU favorite. So Saints, try to play for those early heralds, maybe try to play for a little bit of top, or try to play a little bit of lane pressure and just try to find some way to like get the game going early in your favor because we know GVU plays the mid game very, very cleanly. Yeah, and then look at the, the composition one more time here. Am I just... Is it, it might be my League of Legends boomer side coming out, but do you ever remember Jungle Brand? Uh, I'm not too familiar, <laughs> but I, unless, unless it's like Viego Top, which the NAR pick was. It was sense. definitely yeah. not at those times. This yeah. was a long, <laughs> long time ago there, where I was kind of hoping that there would be some sort of 
like sneaky switch up there but no this makes sense this is another kind of champion that yeah. would fall right into zaikuro's burst mage style yeah just one after another you keep banning them i guess i'm gonna just keep changing it it does not matter like if this goes down it pops off on brand do you focus another ban at him <laughs> it would be the equivalent of what keeps happening to ricky but just towards their bin later instead like they they banned two against Ricky. We've banned two against Akuro already. Yeah. How much more can you try to shut someone down before you start giving something else up if that happens? Yeah, even if this brand goes twenty and zero, I still don't think I'd waste a ban on brand because you're gonna leave something <laughs> even more. And that's just kind of you leave is. Hope That's and the yikes, problem. Is, that's yeah, bad. There's like there's like fifteen <laughs> champs you could feasibly ban, and there's no questions asked. And then it's like, well, there's still like eight other disgusting champions that it's like, do we really want to play against this? Even if they're not like the yeah. strongest champ, it's just like the annoyance is a huge thing in League of just like I don't want to play against this champ because it just makes the game like super cringe and super hard to play. So. Super cr- we see, yeah, it's, it's honestly, yeah, you just you just sit there in, in your lane and you're just like, this is the like most unfun game of all time. But say we're gonna see pretty pretty strong champs from both sides here. Say I, I look for the thing with GVU. It looks like they want to engage with their a couple of engaged champs, and then they want Jin to just poke from long range. The same with Brand. They want Jin and Brand to sit at that safe distance. Jin land those Ws, pop that R, and try to get some damage, and just sit back and get hella damage. And then Diego, Nar, and Rakan are gonna get in there and get their hands dirty. They could play this very kite heavy too, though. Like they don't necessarily. If I'm, I guess, on yeah, the coaching true, side actually. of things here, they can play full disengage. Just because you have the engage tools, I guess, doesn't mean you have to be the one diving in. Yeah. Like, Especially with Nar, you can get in and get out. And Viego can put up the shroud, too. So, actually, very good like, point. Like, Rakan, like, Brand, even, and especially Nar, could almost feel like it. Don't excuse the Overwatch term, but fill that Brigida role. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're gonna dive into me, stun. Yeah, the CC. Back. Yeah, like, that, that, that's actually except that's for a, the whole team. Yeah, that's a very good point. They have yeah, the champs that can get in there, but they can also get out, and that's one of the huge things. You have to be willing to take those team fights and fully engage. But when things, you can start to see a fight turn, and you can kind of notice when the moment when like a fight is like all oh, things are starting to turn against us here. You can just be like, nope, we're getting out of here. We'll reset. Either take a recall, maybe give up a little, maybe give up a plate or two if they have to, and just we're gonna re- retool, reset for the fight. But I'd be, I'm very curious to see if both teams. I don't suspect they would hmm. try to get crazy early fights with these champs. It, they would take like even the engage. They have a lot of engage would be kind of hard to get an early kill. I think, but. I'm curious to see what kind of a... If GVU maybe comes out a little bit aggressive, especially knowing, like, hey, we're down one nothing right now, even though we just completely clobbered them in this series. So I'm very curious to see the mentality and just what the players are thinking going into the sex series. I'm, I mean, oftentimes, at least, like, from traditional sports perspectives, if I was put in this position that GVU was in, I'm looking to destroy you now. Yeah. <laughs> like, there is yeah. absolutely um, no questions asked. Even though, it, like, the situation was absolutely completely 100% warranted, I'm coming for blood. Like I'm ready to yeah. to win, and I am ready to absolutely clobber. Yeah. But yeah. that being said, looks like we have game number two technically of the series yeah. underway, and we might have ourselves an invade. Yeah, Saints actually are gonna go for the early invade top side. Gonna back off that Nar. Gonna get some vision and try. Or actually, Mumu will sweep out that ward. So gonna take out that early ward from the side of GVU. They are still gonna give chase toward the red buff, but I don't suspect they'll actually commit the chase yet. Gonna get a quick recall there. Gonna clear the vision top side try. Gonna get a. Scare Nar a little bit, back him off, say, get that ward uh, burned off, and then a little bit of reset there. Say, actually, yeah, Jarvan, gonna, I think, gonna take out the ward there. Has one CS to start, so. Gonna see a couple members of GVU yeah, roaming toward mid there, maybe just trying to hold off in case they try some kind of bot side invade or something crazy, but quick little reset. Everyone will go back to their lanes, and then uh, we'll get under- underway the laning phase. Absolutely. So, no harm, no foul, really, to say the least here this time by, but looking like red starts here for the side of GVU. And both sides actually going for the red start. So nothing too crazy to start us off here. Yeah, GVU did get deep vision, and luckily we've had enough kills these games where we don't have to cheer for ward destroys. That's yes. Been, that's been a reoccurring theme, and especially like the LAC of the LCS, where it's like sometimes because the players are such high skill, like you don't really want to give up anything, and with the health update, it's a little harder to get those early dives. So you get the crowd and everyone popping for uh, sweeps and ward destroys. Luckily, we've had no shortage of action the first two games, and I don't suspect that will change, especially with St. Clair immediately going for the dive, and then look at Ricky immediately trying to get this poke onto the Nard, getting them down pretty decently as far as HP to start things off, and then once again, Bakery Boy. I'm going to be using that Azir, trying to take down the brand mid, and so far, a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of CS for uh, both teams here, nothing too crazy, though. Absolutely. Meanwhile, down the bot lane, a little bit of poke, but nothing too crazy just yet. If there is any chance here for the Saints to win a bot lane, I feel like an Amumu Misfortune would probably be enough poke to get the job done. That being said, the Jin, of course, can fight back. Yeah. We have ourselves a bit of an invade here from Alonso. He's going to be able to get that smite and get that buff right away. 
Rafa there for a little bit of backup as well, if need be. As long as they get caught out. Nope, all is good. Nice little steal there from Alonzo. Yeah, and I like the Amumu showing into the side of the jungle there. Knowing Misfortune has the wave under tower, she's not really in threat to get killed, especially level 1 Jin's, or level 2. Jin's not going to have his full kit. Actually, no. yeah, level 1. He's not probably not going to have his W yet. Probably going to start Q, at least for wave clearing purposes. And Amumu able to go check the Viego at least a little bit, able to steal the buff. Now Viego is going to path bot side immediately, though, so... We try to get revenge for taking that buff, but be very, very hard to engage and get these kills right now. But a lot of damage. Might be looking for Yeah, Ricky taking a lot of damage onto the Gnar there. Meganar is available for uh, Stripe, so if he decides to use it there to get out of trouble or to make something happen, Alonzo going to clear his blue side there, and Viego still lurking in that try for the uh, bot side there. Yeah, still hovering around, but of course, the Amumu could very well kind of act as a bit of a disengager yep. as well if the bandage toss does land. So, a little bit tougher to pull that one off if, if you do end up missing it. It's going to be a bad time for everybody involved. But with this wave coming in, now the Diego is going to be gone. Cultural looking elsewhere. Considering that uh, Bakery Boy has been going pretty even here, maybe that's the next stop there for the Diego. Yeah, Viego's actually going to go try to steal some camps. Going to get Rakan to back him up. Maybe they're going to send three or four mid, actually, the Azir. Not, not even that far up into lane, only about halfway. But they're definitely looking to either clear this camp and maybe try to get a dive on him. But we'll have to see. Actually, the just hit the Vision Cone as well. So we're going to get a little bit uh, of awareness of where the wards are in the bot side there. They're going to ping yeah, a couple, couple question yeah. mark pings. Yeah, I'm going to realize, okay, they put Deep Ward there. They have a lot of vision there. Brand is going to walk up on Azir. Ricky, once again, still kind of keeping Nar back in the top side here. But just, you know... Top lane, you just want to make sure you play safe more than anything to start because it's a lane that you it's hard to win quickly, but it's very, very easy to lose very fast if you decide to just kind of run it down and try some things. But let's see the early jump on Trundle. Going to come mid, try to mess up the brand. Pillar did come through, but going to get just one auto through. Brand going to get a little poke back for his trouble, but nothing uh, nothing coming out of that early attempt from Alonzo. And just unfortunately here for the Saints, they're just not quite finding their gank timings here. They're always a couple steps ahead of each other, leading it to just extended 1v1s. That being said, though, we could have ourselves another attempt here. It's going to be Alonzo in trouble. Yeah, that was a massive pillar by Alonzo, though, because if that brand was able to walk up, he probably would have ended up getting the kill on Alonzo. We're going to land the bandage toss. Rafa going to get the engage on the Rakan, but Chris Fortune not really in a great spot to do anything and going to get ticked down pretty heavily there. Going to be about 75% HP. Rock Room, very, very low on man as well so probably gonna look for a reset sooner than later to make sure they can come back and get some damage and some pressure in lane looks like they're gonna stop the channel they're gonna stop the recall uh bakery boy is gonna stop it brand gonna get a lot of damage there on the uh on the azir there so definitely not gonna go down for uh for nothing there but still back and forth in the mid lane bot lane a little bit of farm top side nothing crazy viego is starting to path top side though so maybe ricky uh depending where he ends up standing here could be in a very bad spot if Gennar is able to kite him away but looks like ricky kind of has an idea of what's going on in the back yeah, I'm going to back off for now. It is going to be Cultural Force to just go right back to the jungle. And I guess if there's any saving grace here for our Bakery Boy here in the mid lane, it's the fact that any single time that Brand throws out any sort of ability, it just chunks his mana. Yeah. Like, he can't just keep spamming that yeah. in the slightest, as we see similar to what uh, Bakery Boy is doing here with the soldiers, where you can just kind of fire them out and you'll be okay. You can do it a couple of times before you really have to start worrying about yeah. it. But yeah, any single combo, that's like half of your mana. Yeah. And you can't keep doing that. You have to be certain. Get the stun or something. So... At least not too much pressure coming out here in that mid lane. Yeah, besides trying to like power farm, try to get to that lost chapter, get to those those mana upgrade items where you can start to, you know, spam a little more and put a little more pressure on the lane as far as getting farm. Are you level six though? Especially eh? for zoning off. Yeah, say early, very good XP early on, actually. Say gonna have the ultimate online immediately. First one in the lobby. Actually, Ricky also at level six as well. So be a little back and forth in the bot lane. Still looks like Saints gonna try to they're trying to shove the wave a little bit. Looks like they don't want it too hard of a shove, though. They're just going to try to land a couple shots. Actually, Alonzo going to come through for the gank. This misfortune slow comes oh. through, but that Rakan engage onto the teammate just so hard to deal with. Just You think you got him trapped and immediately just one button click and back onto the ADC. And just like that, uh, miss time, not miss time gank, but just no, no results from it. Yeah, with no ultimates on deck for anybody here in the bot lane, it was going to just kind of be a pass aside this time by. Yeah. A little bit of damage, nothing too crazy. Nana still in fine shape, still over about half health, so can keep on farming for at least a little while longer. Of course, gotta just watch out for those little double up bounces, but at the same time, it's not like Rock Boom can just spam that out. Yeah. So, just keeps doing what they're doing, able to just keep things going for the time being, and look, Bakery Boy is maybe thinking about a from down bot, but actually, hang on, another little engage here. Some decent damage, but that's about it. Yeah, and that's the only tough thing. The Amumu landing the bandage toss is awesome, landing that Q, but Rakan, if he can just, he has that one little window outside of the sun where he can immediately just kind of get out of dodge. So if Amumu doesn't commit a second Q, or once he gets level 6, if he doesn't end up burning the R, then it could be very, very tough to catch. And Ricky, gonna get some decent damage on the oh. R. I think Rakan flashed in there as well. Jin W is gonna land. Amumu gonna be caught out, and Knight gonna come through. He will flash the safety, though. 
Looks like maybe they will try to dive. They are going to be playing for this dragon. It looks like, though, the Cloud Dragon is up already. Ricky going to be pushed in pretty far topside. Azir is mid. And I wonder if he's going to maybe show bot side to try to make sure DVU can't get the dragon for free, especially if uh, the bot lane has his force to recall sooner than later. That was so close for Rafa. Whoa, whoa, but yeah. he is going to be able to pull it off this time by and get out alive. Good little backup there from Rock Boom as well, just to keep them in the game. We're going to see Ricky continue to push forward and then just. Always baffles me how much damage Darwin can do, especially to Nar yeah. outside of its mega form. He's gonna try and actually burst them. Holy smokes, what a shot! Wow, Ricky gonna all in. I think he used the ignite as well, but definitely worth it. Actually, gonna he flashed ignite under the tower, gonna go for the full engage onto the Nar and gonna walk away with still about half his health. So huge kill for Ricky. Already has a small CS lead in the top lane as well. Now gonna get the kill, gonna have the slight XP advantage. Is gonna be level eight. I think to the Nar is level six or seven so far. So. Ricky, just great job starting off in the top lane so far. And the Saints, luckily, the first dragon Im didn't immediately get bursted by GVU, so they still have they still can play around with it if they want to. And I guess just the composition kind of leads itself towards it. That being said, though, Kothro is looking to maybe trade this up into a 1v1. Is Ricky going to be able to get the flag and dragon time? Not versus that red buff, so it is going to end up being the one for one. Yeah, that's tough. Low HP, Viego just does a lot. It hits very, very hard, lands the stun to start things off. So Ricky was pretty much caught in the water there. Nothing he could really do. Pillar is going to go by there. Maybe going to start the fight for topside Rift. Wanzer is going to get tagged up. Going to have some help from the Amumu. Going to try to come in. Maybe get a Q available. Fantastic job by Kothro to flash at just the right time. Going to get the uh, the fruit there to heal up a little bit. Still has double buffs. Nar, going to try to engage the Amumu. Huge ZR. Going to push back three members of GVU. Amumu still getting chased down. Those stripes going to try to find the pick, but nothing so far. Going to be a huge skirmish topside over possibly the Rift Herald when they uh, whoever comes out of this alive. But Saints are going to fall back to tower and this might give GVU a small window to take Rift as well. They are going to steal mm -hmm. blue buff too, so going to get a pretty decent amount of value there. The Azir R was big to keep GVU off from getting more picks, but same player going to give up a lot in the process there. I was going to say, if Misfortune is still down in the bottom lane there, Rockboom is still farming up, I'd actually give this team fight with uh, GVU as the favorite just because the amount of burst damage yeah. that there is on this squad. Meanwhile, like you're, yes, Azir and Jarvan can do some decent damage, but then as soon as their cooldowns are gone, if yeah, you nothing. didn't eliminate the person, you're kind of just hoping that, that you get your cooldowns back as quick as possible, in which GVU would be able to absolutely capitalize on that. So Yeah, and Misfortune is only like consistent poke, too. Like They have, obviously, Jarvan has a little bit of range, and Azir has a little bit of poke with the Soldier Shadows, but if you don't have Misfortune there in a team fight, you're going to be in for a pretty bad way trying to get that peel damage, especially if you have Brandon Jin sitting on that back line just kind of peppering away. So... They definitely probably didn't want to fight without Misfortune, but say Saints, pretty good job. Both objectives, Rift actually will be claimed here by the side of the Saints, so great job to get the first objective. Ricky going to dive in all on Coltro. He actually should be able to find the killer. Great pillar by Alonzo to knock him back into Ricky, and the Saints are going to find another kill topside, and Ricky's starting to get a little bit of a lead here on the NAR, CS-wise and in kills now. I mean, just very similarly to what we saw in the last season, if Ricky gets the chance to go ahead or even, he will absolutely find a way to make an impact in the game. Heck, even the classic Ricky Penta, he was losing that lane so badly the entire map until he just wasn't. Until he wasn't. <laughs> and just was able to capitalize on it. So some momentum in his favor is absolutely going to go a long way. Ahead on CS as well. Two eliminations to his name. And Bakery Boy actually may be looking for an engage for himself. Uh, the soldiers are not quite going to find their mark, though. Yeah, are going to be a little bit wasted there in the mid lane, trying to back off the brand. Jin W is going to miss in the bot lane. So Rock Boom and Rafa still just... Doing really, really good, keeping that lane shoved under tower of GBU, trying to stop a little bit of CS possibly from them. We're gonna see Brand possibly maybe gonna roam bot side or try to clear vision possibly. They do have the pink ward in the bush there, but once again, this dragon has been up for a couple minutes now. We know if the way GVU played the last couple games, they're probably itching to try to start this fight, but the bot lane just it's kinda hard to start the dragon fight when your bot lane is shoved under the T1 tower, but uh, they be, maybe slowly. are going to try to start the dragon now because Saints will have to start rotating. Azir will probably have to come down from mid if they want a shot at this, but it looks like GVU might take a dragon for free, and they actually will be able to. They won't get... St. Clair will knock it there with a smite in time, and once again, first dragon goes to GVU. Yeah, I'm going to pass it over without question. Alonso is now here, maybe for the three-on-three. Three. It's all up to Rafa to get this engage, however. Does have the Curse of the Sad Mummy ultimate available if... Uh, does manage to land it. They're kind of bunched up. This would be the best time to do it! Misfortune R is going to go through Amumu with a double knockup. Now the Jinn are going to come through, try to get the damage on Trundle. Coltro is running for his life. Going to get knocked down. Col uh, Alonzo is going to get the kill there. Looks like he might find a second kill bot side as well. Rakan will dash away to the ward, try to get away. Looks like Alonzo should Chomp. find the kill. He will double kill for him. Rock Boom now going to turn on Nana. And I wonder if they're going to turn top side of this river and try to find the pick. But maybe just be happy with what you got. Take the kills. You unfortunately had to give up the dragon. But 
Actually, they do have the Rift Herald as well, so I wonder if they'll maybe drop the uh, the eye charge here and try to get a huge shove on this bot lane. That could have been trouble a little bit there for Ricky up in the top lane, but actually, never mind. It's going to be right back down to the bot lane once again. Are they going to tank this property? Alonzo is down to a sliver. Rafa might have to try and go for this. This teleport's going to make things awkward. Rock Boom with the drive-by. Can he get out in time? So far, it looks like it. That Nar is not going to be in mega oh. form, but that boomerang just actually chunked them alongside the trap there. Yeah. So from beyond the grave, going to find the elimination. Yeah, huge trap there from the Jin just to leave that knowing possibly. And that's the, it's one of the best boss to leave the seat. Running back from the tower. A little bit low on HP than our great teleport to come down bot side and get that uh, get the shove there, especially when Ricky was dominating the top side so far. And once again, a little bit of a pause. Not sure if it was a, a player disconnect or something on the uh, on Riot side of things, but we've seen a pretty good back and forth. Saint Clair looking infinitely better than the first two games, and that being they actually have gotten more objectives now than the last three games combined or two games. So really, really good start so far. And say mm -hmm. it's really good to see Ricky kind of like taking over the top lane again. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen Saints have the gold lead pretty much in the entire series. Yeah. They've always been down, even not necessarily by like an insurmountable amount in like their early to big yeah. game sections. But like to see them in the lead right now with... Like, Ricky so far doing a, a solid job up in the top lane, being able to find those two eliminations. This is the first time, too, that we've seen Alonzo really get his opportunity to shine as yes. well. It's always felt like, again, kind of like how I was trolling Trundle. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, how no. I was I was making fun of how I was making fun of Trundle a little bit where it's like, okay, is he a good champion? Yes. Is he always impactful? Maybe not. It was kind of one of those situations there for Alonzo where he was doing his job, sure, but I was just never... I didn't feel like I was calling his name out, if yeah. you know what I'm saying, to say the least in terms of the pop-off plays. But finding the two eliminations, no deaths, and two assists as of right now, so far so good in their own right. Yeah. And then just going down the list here right now, Bakery Boy, this has also been the most comfortable he's looked yeah. in a matchup here. The brand much more like tolerable, to say the least. Still down in regards to... CS numbers, but it's not by much. Has not given up any sort of eliminations here, and mm -hmm. we know that Zykuro is one of those standout players here on this yep. GVU squad. So to be going basically even is solid. Yeah, especially considering yeah, last time the Nico, he was pretty much even as a Silas, which is a very very strong pick. He was essentially trapped under tower and still getting chunked or fifty percent HP because she was able to just land the root, land a huge damage proc, and then just back off and not even tank one or two tower shots for a trouble. So really really good job in the mid, and that's the important thing. If you think you might have a disadvantage in the lane, at least do your best to not lose it while, you know, not falling too far behind in CS and say pretty much even. And Brand, obviously very, very good at CSing. Lots of AoE, lots of burn damage on the minions. So definitely a really good start for the Saints so far. GVU does have the Cloud Dragon under their belt, but the Saints do have a decent little gold lead to boot as well. I mean, it's a classic FGC meme, right? Oh, you're, if you're that you're going to lose, just don't get hit for it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just, don't, just don't get hit. Just, just, just survive and you'll be fine. But uh, the rest of the lane too, like, if be, it's nice seeing that Rock, Boom, and Rafa, while they might not necessarily be finding themselves on the offensive side of things too, too often, when they do, it's been able to channel into some eliminations for their teammates. So making that misfortune work, they're not behind in this lane. If anything, it's basically dead even. And for Saints only needing the one win here in this series due to the ruling from earlier, this is their absolute best chance to maybe find a series win onto GVU. Yeah, now is the time to strike if you're the Saints. You want to say, you want to try to make plays, but at the same time, how GVU played the last couple of games, you don't want to do anything stupid and get caught out Alonso. He's going to be really close to getting caught by the Rift Trail Pit there. Not have to back off a little bit. It looks like it may be 3v2 topside if they decide to collapse, but just going to go back, get the blue buff, bot lane, a little more back and forth poke. Looks like Rafa might either go to clear wards, do a little bit of roaming, not the worst idea. Muma Rakan is going to be in the river. They might try to collapse on Azir here, but he is going to fall back to the tower. Make sure he stays safe. And looks like a lot of members of GBU are like consistently posturing for a dive, whether it's on the Saints side or their side. But Yegu is going to hit the recall. Rakan and Brand and Jin all kind of getting in that middle of that middle area near the Dragon Pit. Looks like they are going to commit the send to Amumu. They are going to lock him up twice. They are going to get the double root. Amumu is going to be in deep trouble here. I don't think he has got flash up. He does not have hex flash up. Blast going back into the enemy and going to be knocked down. And now going to be a dive on the top side as well. Alonzo going to find the kill. We'll be able to take the tower shot. So Saints are going to go one for one despite everything else there. And I think Misfortune did take the bot yeah. side T1 tower as well. So honestly, not a bad trade if you're St. Clair. As long as nobody else falls here, as we do see Ricky going to barely get out of dodge. Cothro is so low, oh, though. Goodness. Such a good turn here. Can they keep Ricky alive? So far, looks like they can. Nicely done there. Alonzo, another elimination. And honestly, really, Bakery Boy, actually, honestly, the flash being burned there is not the worst thing in the world, because I think if Zyrock walked up with that brand and that HP on Azir and Trundle, he might end up getting a double kill, and that's exactly what you don't want from one of the stronger players, is already has a full item, and let him snowball the mid lane like that, so even though, uh, I think, what was it, uh, Zyrock had to burn the, or, yeah, 
Azir had to burn the flash or Bakery Boy. Definitely worth for there to not give up that extra kill. And St. Clair, let's say, it's trades like that where you can draw some attention, get the numbers disadvantage, take advantage of it, and then immediately just get out of there. Yeah, Saints are now in the driver's seat here. Sure, the Amumu did go down. And if there is, I guess, one negative right now is that since Curse of the Sad Mummy is such a long cooldown, they will not have it for this dragon that's supposed to spawn in 30 seconds, without question. That yeah. thing takes like an eternity, like three minutes it feels yeah. <laughs> like, to actually come off cooldown. But, might be more like two. But, you're not going to have that one big combo piece. That being said, the way this team comp works, you do have other combo pieces to go alongside that uh, bullet time. As we now see another attack here onto the mid lane. Actually, it's going to be Pluto getting chopped. Yeah, fantastic combo. Ricky going to get the engage there onto Pluto, and then Amumu coming in with the bandage toss. Just going to follow up there. Perfect job. Double CC, maximum time stunned, and St. Clair gonna find that pick, and I think this is the pick they need to try to get Dragon, but Amumu is gonna roam topside. Or say, we're gonna have Jarvan roaming back to top lane, we're gonna have Brandon Nar both trying to clear that topside wave and try to push wow. that under, but if I was the Saints, I maybe would have tried to play for the Dragon. Actually, I think Azir and Trundle They're are already there. two-man yep. the Dragon. Yeah, I thought maybe they'd send one more, but now it looks like they are gonna try to trade off the Rift as GVU. They're gonna back off Amumu, but the Saints, honestly, if they want, they can go take some jungle camps. They might be able to reload and contest the Rift if GVU tries to go early. And they do have utility available. The only thing they blew in that last battle was the Cataclysm. So they very well could continue to try and maybe push towards that Rift Herald if the opportunity arises. Alonzo might get caught out here, however. The Viego there of Cthulhu is looking to hunt them down, but with a little bit of extra reinforcements, going to get away just safely. Yeah, very clutch blast cone there for Alonzo, able to get out of there, because that would have been uh, three to four seconds of CC probably, and who knows with the Viego damage if you would have got out of there, but... We are going to see GVU posturing bot side once again. Say, so luckily, St. Clair already took out the dragon. Rift is still up. They are. It looks like a, there will be a pink ward for uh, GVU on the backside there. So maybe St. Clair try to clear the vision and set up a team fight. Alonzo is going to clear the ward. Going to actually start the Rift Herald as well. So as you're going to go for the follow, we've got two members of GVU in the mid lane. Going to path bot side again. So if I'm St. Clair, this is pretty much. If I have vision on the bot side, this is. I'm going to take the Rift Herald. This is where they need to attempt to snowball this as quickly and as safely as possible, yes. though. Of course, both of those words being the exact opposite, <laughs> <Yeah>. basically. <laughs> it's basically impossible having those calculated aggression moments. Can be done, but still very difficult in its own right. And okay, Rick, he just diving right onto him. Yeah, I actually really like that idea, although the Ignite did come through. Now, Ricky is actually going to fall for his trouble, though, so Ooh. I don't hate the idea of engaging onto the brand, especially that second wave of Engage. Almost got the kill there, but that's going to hurt you. They are going to fall. They are going to place the Rift topside, though, so all the attention they oh, create, this is gone. they're going to trade a kill for a tower. They might get a second Rift charge as well. They do have three members of the team there as well. Amumu is going to be there with a couple Qs. He does have his R up as well. Yeah, Miss sure. Fortune. Actually, yeah, very good use of the bullet time to uh, clear out the mid wave and try to get Pryo and take another tower. Rift. We'll end up getting shut down, though. Not Won't get a second charge, but if you're St. Clair, only losing one kill for almost two towers, you'll take that all day. I mean, they need to kind of get this mid turret, though, for to, that to yeah. be the full like compensation for it. Alonso's really going to try it. They might have to just give it up and let this one go, because otherwise they're just going to get dogpiled on. Alonzo is actually going to flash out of there. So much CC and so many members, all five members mm. of the team chasing down. Just no way to get out of there. The mid tower actually didn't fall as no. well, so GVU... Very, very good play. That backside TP by the Nar just proved to like pay dividends immediately, and then the Jin W comes through for the rune. And GVU, fantastic job to hold the mid wave there and not let the tower crash and say get the kill, hold the tower. Very, very good for GVU. Saints just like you said, somehow you got to play safely but aggressively. And it's hard to find that balance, but that's that's the hmm. strategy right now. Yeah, calculated aggression, not just full send. We, we all can full send. We've seen our solo queue games. Yes. But <laughs> I will run it down with the best of them. <laughs> Absolutely, but in the competitive setting, trying to find that balance is just what makes certain players stand out and certain teams stand out from the others, right? So yeah. that being said, bot turret getting a little bit of pressure here there from Zyrock. Or Zyrock, uh, yeah, it is Zyrock. Yeah, uh, I've been confusing the two minions. I, I don't know why. I'm no. flipping them up too. I don't know why. <laughs> It's just one of those days, apparently. I've been here since 9, leave me alone. <laughs> but still, it's nice to see Saints still holding that lead. But again, this is still striking distance. Yeah, they are going to actually take the red buff there. I think they're going to give it to Rock as well. So Rock going to be on the red buff, I think. Now Alonzo going to go take the blue there. I think the, yeah, the brand may have got the blue buff from the uh, the other side. Oh, so this is bait. Going to go for the engage, but Rakan is going to be there, possibly for the knockup as well. Going to send them flying back, and Ricky in a very bad spot. I might be able to find the kill on Brand. Going to find a lot of abilities. Uh -oh. Oh, God, he will find the kill, and he actually, no way. he will turn and kill Rakan, I believe, as well. Rakan, nowhere to go. Going to try to yeah. get the last one, and Ricky finds oh, a double my. kill. And now he's got the red buff and the blue buff for his trouble. Going to be able to shove this bot side wave and GVU. I like the idea, but man, that Jarvan already <laughs> so far ahead. 180 CS and got five kills. And now going to build oh the gold drinker. Going to have the second full item with the lucidity boots. But I will say, GVR St. Clair, yeah, they're going to take the Baron as well. So 
Diego actually gonna probably come. He might try to 50 with the smite, but that's the only nope. thing. If you don't Backing win up. that 50 with the smite and Yulu gave another kill to St. Clair, that could be on your route to GG. So Saints, fantastic job, Ricky, drawing so much attention bot side, and they get a free Baron out of it. That was bait, but not for me. Like, yeah, it's not an ambulance, yeah. but not for me. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Getting to see that one on two victory there from Ricky. We've seen it with characters like Darius, for example, before. I've not seen him pull that off with Darwin. Just beautifully done. And you can tell when he's feeling it, when he, he's able to go even or ahead in his lane. He is just an absolute monster to deal with. And the good on the rest of the Saints, too. After seeing that, just full capitalization. Yep. Rush that Baron. That's exactly what you need more objectives. And the pain might not be done here. Oh, yeah. This is definitely going to be one kill for Ricky. Actually, it should be two kills as well. Viego tried to come in for early help, but Ricky might be able to find the second killer. Actually, Viego going to get a lot of damage. Flash is going to go through Rakan. Going to go for the knockoff. Yeah. Now, Ricky is going to get shot down. Oh, wait a minute. Shot down for Viego, but it's a huge mid uh, midwave crash. And then the Saints are actually going to be able to take two towers here. Jin going to sit back. Going to be able to poke a little bit, but with four members, with, with the crown spell shield on a zero as well, the W, not going to give a ton of value. They're going to get an inhib out of it as well. And actually, oh my unless gosh. there's some recalls here for GVU, the Saints might walk this Baron wave into the next tower, but honestly, probably the smart decision. Pop the blue trinket there for some uh, short side vision and then just get out of there and Dragon's up too now. Yeah, say Infernal Drake is up, and if the Saints go to it, it will be free. Viego's on recall. They'll be able to burst the dragon. Oh, they're kind of splitting up a little bit, though. If they really want to rush yeah. it down, maybe they could find it. We are going to see the curtain call come out here for the gen. Just going to be trying to take some pot shots over at the Rock Boom, who I think was stealing the Raptors in that situation. Yeah. Stripes is going to go mega, but maybe too early. We'll have to see if that alt is available. Of course, being able to just yeet the entire team is always deadly in its own right. But this dragon's up for a toss-up. Yeah, and this is huge. Saints do swap the Baron buff for a little while, but we're going to see some, probably some massive engage from one side here. It looks like GVU trying to peel as they take the dragon. Very, very smart. They don't necessarily want to engage the Saints. Although Ricky isn't oh, quite there yet. Now, Ricky is on the way up, though, and this dragon is not quite down in HP. It is going to regain. Now that Ricky's here, I'm not sure GVU wants to contest this. And Mumu Rafa is going to walk right up there and try to zone in. Great job by St. Clair. GVU takes down the Dragon a half HP and St. Clair. Once Ricky shows up, that level 15 Jarvan already having almost full build. That's tough to fight with. Ricky is going to go for the engage possibly. Pillar is going to come through, but Saints going you know, to walk GVU back into base here. And GVU, they got to... This is going to be a hard hold that they got up. Ricky being like significantly far ahead, especially as far as items go. Having six kills to the NAR zero. He's going to do so much damage, and they have so much engage. If, if they get hooked on once or twice, they're going to be dead. Okay, that was just two teams being absolutely brilliant there. The only person that could have been engaged on in that fight would have been Stripes there on the NAR. And if he got Cataclysm done, okay, just hop out of it. Out, yeah. But then good on Ricky and Alonzo as well to know that, hey, if we just all in this guy, he's going to escape. So the calculated aggression, I was kind of joking about it earlier, but it's on full like full display here. Yeah, and now we're going to see a 5v5 in the bot lane. St. Clair, I think what they want to do is, as long as they have this Baron buff, just shove the wave in this part, and actually it would just go away at the end there. So making very good use of the Baron buff, able to crash the bot wave. Top wave not fully crashed in, but they did take the middle inhibitor, so GVU going to have to sit back and try to farm a little till it respawns and make sure they don't get that quick push. But if you're St. Clair, this is almost a dream start through 24. Yeah, absolutely. The the ball's in their court, so to speak, here. They've done the damage. Inhibitor in the center is still, of course, just pumping out super minions, so the pressure is on in that regard. Of course, the catch-up XP, though, is very well oh, something that could come back here. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> and... Like, Jin is oftentimes kind of like that in-between between the... Uh, like the lane bully, but at the same time, just doing an absolute stupid amount of damage in yeah. the late game. And you get those those bullets, especially the fourth shot. If you can hit the right target, you yep. hit Bakery Boy, you hit Rock Boom with one of those. It's uh, like your entire health is basically gone just from shot number four. So positioning is still very key here. It, Saints are not far enough ahead that they can just full send here. They still have to be very, very careful. As we see, maybe Grandview looking for a trap here. Yeah, and I don't actually hate that idea. You're able to kind of keep the use oh, Jin to keep the midwave in there. Oh, this is very scary. Ricky going to have to be very careful. Amumu on the backside. Huge knock up onto Ricky. Going to get knocked into the air by Rakan. Amumu going to go for okay. the Bullet time going to get tons of value. Going to knock down almost two of the Jin. Oh my gosh. Through. Azir going to get the kill as well. Amumu still there. Should be able to land one more bandage toss before the flash. Flash will come through. Stun not going to matter. Nana will fall to the Saints. And now... Only <laughs> one member left alive, the Jin. Gonna get chased on by Alonzo and the Saints, so they play their cards right. They get in the game right here. Yeah, 
GVU on the verge of falling here. The Saints are on oh, the Nexus turrets. Bar. And a beautiful ultimate coming out from Bakery Boy. And now the Nexus Towers are falling. The Saints are going to be able to capitalize wow. on the situation. Show up for your games on time. Otherwise, it just takes once. And the Saints turning the game and the series, the both series, on its head right there. GVU looked completely dominant and we saw every single game today ended before the 30 minute mark which is honestly very quick yeah. which is a rarity in the league especially with the new meta with people either playing like a little more passive or depending on the comp but St. Clair they went full engaged and especially on Ricky Ricky engaged every single chance he had that game he just was like I know I have the advantage I'm gonna go in there and start this thing yes but he also like he did his engages yes absolutely but he saved the proper tools for certain yeah. situations like I'm thinking of that last team fight specifically there he had the Cataclysm essentially immediately when that when he got jumped on, mm -hmm. but he didn't fire it off right, right away. Yes, he had Rafa there for backup, and they were able to stall things out. The bullet time became clutch. Yes. As soon as that bullet time started coming across, he still had his alt. He did not panic yep. alt initially. Like, let's be honest, the majority of us probably would have 99%, did. yeah. Like, we would have saw, like, oh, group of four right here. It's it just, yeah, alt. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then I go down. I did my burst damage. I'm done. Yep. But, but I am dead. You're off the field at that point. But... Just fantastic judgment across the entirety of the Saints. Yeah. That was, it may have only been the one game here, but that was a night and day difference. Yeah. Just calculated plays there. And I I know we will praise Ricky, but that was across the board. Just yes. fantastically done. Yeah, that was pretty much, they pulled the Uno reverse card of GVU because we saw the Saints <laughs> that game. The first two games when they were getting picked, it was usually like a 1v3, 1v4. Even Ricky at the end, that was still very, very risky. But this time you saw five members Play the bot lane, try to shove tower with the Baron buff. Five members fighting in mid. Five members going to the dragon and zoning it off and getting those objectives. So they get that little bit of extra damage in the next fight. Because, say, the dragons give you the individual buffs are, like, pretty substantial. So getting the Infernal Drake, immediately walking it down mid and starting that 5v5 and basically making GVU fight on their terms. Like, hey, we're going to try to start things off here. I thought GVU started the last fight. Saints definitely finished it. That bullet time, though, that was incredible value to kick things off. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, like, looking at how Rockboom was playing the Misfortune Nights on by. The bullet time was like scarcely used. If anything, yeah. it was a wave clear tool for the most part. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing it in the mid lane that, yep. that, on that one occasion where they tried the force made. It didn't necessarily go in their favor, but for having combo tools, they didn't combo often. Yeah, It was just when they had the opportunity, it was executed properly. Yes. And they just took the one opportunity there. That bullet time at the very, very end had three to four players inside of it. We just saw the bars melting. Yeah. And the fact that Rafa was able to lock them all in there that Ricky was able to lock them all in there. Yeah. Alonzo was slowing everybody down. And then we did see Bakery Boy with the flanks at the end, too, yeah. just to help secure the deal. And I think the Sand Soldier just constantly poking. And just everything that could have went right yeah. in that game absolutely did. I kind of hope they play this style a little more. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You definitely like to see that, especially whether it's the same comp or a slight, a slight variation or adaptation. Just the way they, yeah... The three, the three or four people that were supposed to start the engage did a great job of getting the fight started. And then you have that misfortune, you have that backline damage. And we saw early in the game too, I think they willingly didn't take a team fight without the fortune because they realized like, hey, we probably mm -hmm. don't have the peel damage to actually win this. And if this fight turns, we're going to be in trouble. And then we have misfortune on an island bot lane, probably just farming away. And who knows if she gets dove on or something happens. So great job yeah. to set up the engage, follow through with the peel damage and just and play around those objectives. So I think they were able to take both Rift Heralds and look at Ricky, just 19k damage. That's just, yeah, just absolutely uh, superb. And then we saw a great play, say, Alonzo, 5-1. and one, Just His presence was so much more felt again. We felt absolutely. like every time someone was either getting ganked or dove on, it was a pillar coming through to knock someone aside. It was the ice slow coming through. He was just landing sun, like such good auto attacks. And say, everyone did their part there. And everything, even the Amumu 027 doesn't look glamorous, but bet you not, he started three or four of those fights. Yeah. And, and Amumu was supposed to be the one with zero kills and like a billion assists. And you're going to die a couple times starting yeah. those fights. And I was actually going to give Rafa some credit. Like you're just pretty much running on that point because it wasn't necessarily that he was starting the fights. He was stopping the fights from happening in yes. the first place. I think of that Infernal Dragon that was happening down in the river, yep. I think about halfway through the game. And just his mere presence leading the charge doesn't have any damage he's like essentially merely just a crowd control bot yeah, right literally. but by just standing there leading the charge decent amount of gaps if he gets jumped on he's probably gone however you have to respect that he's right there yeah and he could lock you all down and then maybe the rest of the teammates can take dragon then yeah. get you yeah and like there's nothing on the scoreboard for that no and that's one of the things i always have to talk about like for any of the games, for all the support players, sometimes it's what didn't happen yeah. because of you that is the value there. 
And people might say like, oh, I have like 16 kills and like you died 17 times. What's wrong with you? It's like, hey, it doesn't matter. I set you up. Yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> I kept you safe. Yeah, the support's like the point guard of the team. You're going to, you might, he's going to be all in the assist column. He might only score like six to eight points or, you know, get a couple kills. But say, that was a good point too. If, even if the team wants to go, hey, three of us want to die this Mumu. If Mumu able to click the R button in between that, now three members of GVU mm -hmm. are not going to be able to play the game. And if any of the Saints are close by, especially Ricky, you get that second wave of engage, that second wave of CC. And if you, if you had the damage edge like the Saints did, that fight will turn very, very quickly. So Amuma's almost like the perfect bait support because you're like basically throwing your body into the fire going, hey guys, come get me. I have a couple abilities for you and then mm -hmm. wait for everyone else to come in and finish off. Absolutely. And just again, it was nice to see the Saints be able to turn this one around yep. the way that they ended up doing. And then in that case there with Rafa as well, if he gets blown up and even in a worst case scenario, the Saints all get wiped afterward. We still got the objective. Yeah. We still got the dragon. Yeah. We have bonus damage now. So our next team fight's going to be scary. Sure. You have a little bit of gold in your pocket, but we still have the lead. Yeah. Like, like, it yeah. was just well calculated. The proper calculated aggression. It's yeah. no meme. It's a thing. Yeah. So they, they, <laughs> they one time, the thing they did was they traded kills for objectives too. Like you're willing to take a one for one trade if you're able to get rift off of it, steal a couple jungle camps. So the last game, GVU did such a good job of just punishing everything the Saints did. The Saints sent like three topside. They just go take Dragon or they gank bot. And the Saints this time just, they kind of moved as like a pack of just hungry dogs. Just kind of, we're going to mm -hmm. go topside. We're going to roam it. We're going to roam bot. Everyone's going to play off each other. And right there we saw like completely fit results. Just Hopefully more of that moving forward, as you said. Yeah, a little bit of a death ball comp of sorts, but it definitely worked out. And sure enough, finally, going towards the mid lane there from the side of GVU, the one time that he, uh, Zakuro could not get a pop-off performance was the chance that we were able to take advantage yep. of. Maybe finally using enough bands <laughs> to <laughs> force him onto the brand, yep. into the composition that ended up occurring here, because I think he picked the brand into the Azir. Yep, he so he knew Azir this was going to be the case, pick. but it ended up being more of a survival lane for him. Yep. Meanwhile, the rest of the lanes, it was either like a 50-50, who gets stunned first, whoever gets stunned gets blown up, yep. or they just had the the lane lead essentially off the start due to the matchup or jungle help or just outplays to be honest. I'm yeah. not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Zykuro is an absolutely fantastic player in his own right. Yeah. But the one game that it could not quite capitalize Saints capitalized and got themselves a victory. Even though I'm looking at the, the stats right here right now, uh, Zykuro still had the most damage by far on his squad. Just brand things. You get that, especially when you have Leandris, you just hit someone you once just burn. and you get hundreds of damage off screen, not even hitting another ability. So yeah, obviously pretty standard build into brand there, but yeah, such good job by the Saints. Really say really interesting comp, but a really effective one, especially in this new meta. Once just get those two, three waves of CC and Saints, once again, just such a good job of controlling the engagements there and fighting on their own terms. And when it wasn't on their terms, they found a way to get out of it and make it on their terms and turn it. So absolutely. So definitely a feels good ending here, yes. especially considering how the first set of Hue Fest was and again for anyone who may have been confused why we had necessarily two sets here today the way that Hue Fest is doing this is a double round robin so everybody plays their group twice and because it was in like rather short notice everybody's trying to squeak it all within a week that's why we're getting a lot of these matches back to back whether it was for Overwatch for, uh, Rocket League or League of Legends yep. so for the Saints to go up against what's probably their toughest group opponent and at least go one and one that's good. Yeah. That's really good. And of course, we're trying to qualify to get to a like a top eight LAN, yeah. which is the, the big thing here. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see what happens further down. GVU may still have us beat out depending on how the other games go, but we'll have to see. Still plenty of League of Legends and yes. Fest to go. There will be a matchup tomorrow, but that one will not be on stream, unfortunately. But that'll be up against Juni uh, Juniata College, which I think the coach was saying sounds pretty confident. They're looking, uh, feeling good going into it. But then on Friday, we are going to be able to see the League of Legends team again up against SUNY Buffalo. And that was the game that I was talking about earlier. This will be the second set for it. But the, cert, the first set was like a 26-7 to 7 kind of game in the Saints' favor. So they, whatever they did had their number that yep. time by. But in regards to the broadcast, it will be Rocket League tomorrow in Hue Fest as we have our toughest opponent yet in that group, which I know normally wouldn't mean a lot. Have you seen how the couple of games happened in Hue Fest? That was absolutely disgustingly yeah. like amazing in our favor, regardless of who was on the field for yeah. us that day. That being said, though, it's Stockton University, of course, the second place, the runner-ups from the championships um, last semester. Yeah. Still an absolutely fearsome team. We're going to catch that. If we win that, I think we're pretty much a shoe-in for... Uh, 
or to land. Yeah, usually beating Stockton will put you in a pretty good place in the standing. So hopefully they can continue the uh, the back of their their huge wins against Aquinas. I think maybe one other win. So, but mm-hmm. Stockton definitely our toughest test of probably of all of Hugh Fest so far. Exactly. Tomorrow yeah. night, yeah, of all any of the titles. Yeah, and then we'll be, of course, back with League of Legends probably early in the afternoon. It says 3 o'clock right now. I'm going to have to double-check that because gamers playing at 3 o'clock, that doesn't seem right to me. <laughs> it's not a weekend, so we'll have to see. <laughs> no shots intended, but any final thoughts here about this matchup that we saw here tonight? No, just as long as they can keep that moving forward. And the game say even the first series, like every single game seems to be so weirdly one-sided for one team or the other. It just seems like <laughs> whatever team gets that early lead or grabs like the first few dragons of the early objectives just kind of seems to snowball the game. And honestly, quickly, usually we might see like a snowball like to like 30, 35 minutes, but these ones are kind of like teams realize like when they had that window, you can just honestly end the game. If you have, if you get one ace, even if the, the team still has like the, the base tower and the inhibitor, like you can still kind of make a push and win the game. And Saints just mm. really good job there. And hopefully they can keep that going forward on Friday. Yeah, absolutely. But with that, we will be calling things a night for tonight. Thank you all for bearing with us. I know it took us a little bit of a time here to get started up, but we have justice and we have found ourselves one and one here yeah. tonight. So overall, solid day considering the strength of our opponent. And I guess with that, we'll catch you tomorrow.